one-on-ones afterwards, so what you get up here is what you're going to get today. And uh, one last thing is we uh, have two days off uh, after today, Monday and Tuesdays off, and we get back on the practice field on Wednesday like uh, we had originally planned. So with that, Pat Hayden. Thank you, Tim. Good afternoon. Um, this has been a hard day for all of us in, uh, inside USC Athletics. Um, for me personally, uh, this is not the most fun part of the job, but indeed it is part of the job. And my job is to do what I think is best for USC, and this decision I've made this morning I believe is best for USC. Uh, I, I'd first like to start off by, by thanking Lane Kiffin and his family. I personally have a great deal of respect for Lane personally and as a professional. He did a lot of things well under some very difficult circumstances here. Uh, no one could have worked harder. He did a lot of the things we asked of him, graduated players, never had compliance issues, did a lot of things well. And so we, and he really worked under some very difficult NCA sanctions. There's just no doubt about it. If you watched our game last night and saw, you know, Robbie Colens, who was working in Tim Tessalone's sports information office last year, play the second half as a wide receiver, you understand some of the challenges we've had uh, with our roster. And uh, Lane never once complained about it, uh, lived with it, and did the absolute best he can. And so uh, I thank Lane and his family for all they've done for USC. Uh, sequencing of events, uh, uh, this morning we got on our plane at about uh, 1 o'clock. I told Lane I'd like to see him after we arrived uh, back in Los Angeles. By the time Lane and I got together, it was close to 3 this morning. We met for about 45 minutes in a, a, a private room uh, off, off where we, uh, at the airport where, where we landed. Um, Lane um, was clearly disappointed. Um, he, he's, he's a great recruiter. He battled me. He really, uh, really tried to uh, keep his job, and I respect him for that. I would have respected him less if he didn't. Um, but at the end of the day, as I said, I think it was the right decision. That about uh, that was roughly uh, 3:45, 4 o'clock ish this morning. Uh, within about 30 minutes, we had sent a text out to our football team, um, kind of telling them that there was going to be a change. That we were going to have a team meeting here this morning at 11 o'clock. This was technically a day off for our team, and so um, we, we let them sleep in a little bit and had them come in at 11 o'clock. Um, I got here this morning uh, a little before 9, and I met with Ed Ogeron. Ed is going to be our interim head coach. Had a good conversation uh, with Ed this morning. I actually had sp spoken with Ed by phone earlier this morning as well. But Ed and I had a meeting this morning kind of talking about uh, his early plans and what we can do over our next uh, eight weeks in our season. Um, then I met with our uh, football staff, most of our staff. Some of our coaches are out uh, on the road, but we had a, a very good meeting. We have good men, good coaches, good men of character whom I've, for whom I have a great deal of respect. Um, and um, as you can imagine, this is difficult for them and their families as well. Uh, but they, uh, we, they're going to give it their absolute best effort. And, and, and uh, uh, they have had subsequent meetings with our coaching staff here o over the last hour. And I'm convinced these guys are all going to work ex exceedingly hard to make this, this, this season the best it can possibly be. At about 11 o'clock, um, we did meet with our team. We had virtual attendance, a couple guys we couldn't get a, a hold of, just about everybody. I, I would say the team's reaction was great, and you can talk to some of our uh, high-quality guys here in just a few moments, uh, but they, they were just spectacular, I thought. You know, you're a 18, 19, 20-year-old young man, and it, it's not easy, but I think they handled it uh, particularly well. Um, it's never um, the perfect time to, to make a, a change or, or the right time, the right moment. It's uh, very, very difficult, I think, particularly in, in college athletics and college football. But I thought this was the right time. And uh, I think it could easily be asked, um, why not last year after a seven and six season? What do you know now that you didn't know then in it after seven and six season? And the rationale was a little bit uh, as follows. Uh, the prior year, Lane had won 10 games. Uh, we thought and was hoping that last year was an aberration. Felt we could rebound, uh, make some changes, and indeed Lane did. Hired what we think is a spectacular defensive coordinator in Clancy Pendergast. 
uh, 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 but for last night when we had some issues defensively, as you saw, we played pretty good defense. So we've made some changes. We made some changes there. But at the end of the day, we, it just became a gut feeling that we weren't making the progress that I felt we needed to make, that I thought we should be making, and the, uh, some of the inconsistency we found in our in our team. So, as I said, it's it's never the perfect time to do these things, but I thought it was the right time, and that's my job. Um, I mentioned we're going to have Ed Ogeron as our uh, interim head coach. Ed has been here for uh, 11 years, different uh, terms, and very, some very successful runs. He's got some head coaching experience. I think he knows USC. I think he's beloved by the USC family. He brings an incredible passion and energy that we need with this team. And uh, we think he's going to do as good a job as you possibly can do under, under these circumstances. So without any further ado, I want to bring up uh, Ed Ogeron. Ed? And I'll be happy to answer the questions later. Thank you, Pat. What's up, guys? First of all, on behalf of the team and our coaching staff, I'd like to tell everyone how much we appreciate Lane Kiffin. He was very good to all of us. He worked his tail off. And he loved USC. And uh, it's an unfortunate day today uh, that coach got let go. And we understand the circumstances. I want to tell you that we're here as a staff to answer the bell. We're all accountable for what happened as a staff and as players, as Trojans know how to do it. I want to thank Pat Hayden, Max Nikias, and the Trojan family for trusting me to be the interim head coach for USC. We had a very positive meeting with our staff this morning. It was a hard morning for everyone. We came out of there with a lot of positive thoughts and a lot of positive energy. Then we had a team meeting with guys like Marcus and Devon here and all the guys here. And uh, we came out there with a positive vibe and made a recommitment to start day one of this is our season and to give it all we got for the Trojan family. I really feel that we have a very strong leadership on this football team. And I'm excited to be their coach for the next eight games and let's see where it takes us. We've already spoken to our recruits about the value of USC, about what's going on at USC. Uh, recruiting has been one of our strengths here, will continue to be one of our strengths. And we expect to have a great recruiting class and continue to bring some of the best recruits across the country to USC. Uh, after our meeting this morning with uh, Pat and uh, meeting with the offense, Clay Helton will be the offensive coordinator, and he'll be the play caller. And in closing, uh, we look forward to seeing you at practice. And we'll do our best to get you there as best as we can. And Tim will be talking to you about it a little later on. But thank you, and thank you for your support. Let's do a question first with Pat. Jim. Yeah, Pat, it's never, as you mentioned, easy to, to fire a coach much less during the course of a season. When did you start thinking about this? And obviously, there must have been something that has gone wrong drastically since you, at the beginning of the season, said you know you were giving them a, a vote of confidence. Right, and I, and I actually say this about every one of our coaches, Jim, and we have a lot of them here, uh, 19 head coaches. We, we support our coaches 100% until they're no longer our coaches. I mean, that's, I mean, why would you support a coach 85%? I mean, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And, and I think it was really just, just this, um, this gut feeling in, in, of not really improving the way we had envisioned over the first five games. You know, I didn't really see this three and two start. I, I, I thought we'd have a little different start. Now, again, numbers were down, new quarterback and such, but I just still didn't, still didn't see this. And th that was really the reason. Yeah, yep. Hey, Bill. Well, I would probably say yes because I made the decision last night, right? Yeah, but I mean, and this this has been brewing for a while, you know, and and uh, I, I f haven't felt particularly good even from the Hawaii game. I just felt we just haven't been the consistent team that we need to be at USC. You know, we've played 125 years of some pretty doggone foot good football here at USC. We're just all a small piece of the continu continuum. We're going to play be playing football 125 years from now. Uh, I was just a tiny little piece of it. Lane was, Pete Carroll was. We we'll all add up into this continuum of USC football, and we just we just realize that our history has been great, and we need to be great again. Yes. Pat, um, when you're looking ahead with Coach 
Bergeron now, obviously, as your interim coach, but looking into the future of the program, you said that Lane Kiffin pretty much had done everything you would ask of him outside of what's going on in the football field where he fell short. Looking ahead to your permanent head coach, first of all, what are you looking for from that individual? Secondly, do you have any restrictions on the kind of packages you can offer any candidate for the USC job? Well, I think there's about six questions there. I but, um, <laughs> you know, we're going to try to find the best coach we can possibly uh, find for USC. As a matter of fact, you are all candidates in this room. Um, and, um, and so, um, but, but I, I really don't want to really, Rick, I mean, uh, Steve, talk about the, the search now. I, I think it's, it's, it's not fair to our team. Uh, I think it's disrespectful for our, for our football team. These, these, guys, these, these two in particular, and we have some really great kids. It's about them right now. So let's, let's worry about a search, the next coach. We'll, we'll do that. We have to do that. We understand. But it's, it's in our future. It's not right now. Not, this is not right, the right time. Gary. Well, I, I, th I think all of us, and you're right, I have said that, and, I, and I'll say it again, all, all our athletic directors who, who oversee various sports, that is part of their job, do you think, and who their next coach is? Because you can lose a coach in a variety of ways, Gary, right? And so, um, you know, I, I've been thinking about this since the day I got the job. I wouldn't be doing my job if I uh, wasn't thinking uh, about that. All the coaches I'm thinking about are living, though. They're all living at this point. Yes? As this was brewing, this week as a strategic week to, to make a move like this, given that you have the, the extra week off? I, I, right. I mean, I think that made it a little bit easier, certainly not easier for Lane and his family, but yeah, the fact that we could just take a, a little bit of a deep breath, exhale, have this bye week, gather ourselves a little bit more rather than a short week when you're, we have a week coming up when we're playing on a Friday night after a Saturday game. And so, yeah, I think the extra time uh, helped that decision. Yes, Jill. Absolutely not. I, I've fully supported Lane Kiffin 100% until last night. As I said before, we support all our coaches 100% of the no longer our coaches, Jill. Uh, can you describe what uh, interim head coach means and what opportunities uh, and the rest of the guys will be given after this season? How you look upon <laughs> That. Well, he is our interim head coach. He's got at least eight games in you know, our big rivalry games. We're going to play the very first Thursday night home game at the Coliseum ever. I mean, it's a pretty big game for us, followed by Notre Dame. and Stan We have Stanford, UCLA. And so we have a lot of big, big games ahead of us. There's a lot to be proven, a lot to be, be played for this season. It's certainly not over. It's not a death. Now, this is supposed to be a game of fun and joy. And I think one of the things we're looking for for Ed is to bring that fun and joy back into the game of college football. Uh, he'll be evaluated just like any other candidate. Uh, Ed is a good man who knows USC, who's going to, I promise you, he's going to give you everything he has. As a matter of fact, I was out of practice a week or two ago, and I, I was blown away by, I don't know how long Ed has been a coach, how long you've been a coach, 30 years? 27 years. And, and the passion, and this was just a regular old Monday. And the passion that Ed had coaching defensive linemen through that same stupid bag drill he's done for 27 years. I mean, it's just incredible. Um, so that energy, that passion, the love for the game, the love for the university, I think it means a lot to us. I think the Trojan family really appreciates it. This is not easy on Ed. This is not easy on me. This is not easy on these kids. But this is the nature of athletics and sport. Well, well, we won't know until we play those games, right? I mean, we just that, that, that's unknowable. I can't answer that particular question. Um, all, all I know is, um, you know, Lane did negotiate some of these things remarkably well. But, you know, I also have to believe in, in my heart of hearts, you know, I have supported Lane with my heart and soul for three and a half years. And I've given him every opportunity. And he, and he wasn't given a, a fair hand in a lot of ways. And I said all along, we've graded on the curve. But 
We failed on the curve too. You know, you, you know, fans, you know, love you for 30 seconds at a time, you know, and, and I, I went through that as a player myself, and I understand that. Uh, it really didn't, it wasn't really the, the, the nexus of the decision at all. Uh, I think it's just a combination of things over the last two and a half years, really. Back to the course of, of this action, uh, a lot of times there are all kinds of stories that are out there. Did you hear any complaints from players or coaches about how Lane was handled? No, I did not hear any complaints from players or coaches, none. Shelley. Uh, what conversations did you have with others regarding this decision of taking the president or donors? Just with, just with the president, Max Nikias. And that was last night? Yes. Okay, one more. Yep. Was the bottom line wins and losses, or was it other things, off the field stuff? Was it just wins and losses? Was that the bottom line? I, I think it was just the whole, it, it was a variety of things, Bill. I mean, uh, you know. All our coaches are in the winning business, every one of our coaches. And when you're a coach at a place like USC, sadly, I mean, that I shouldn't say sadly, that we, we have winning championships in our DNA around here. You have to do the other things as well. They, they are you know, a priority, they're a given. You have to play by the rules, you have to graduate players, you have to care about your kids. Those are all, those are all expected. But at the end of the day, if you ask any one of our head coaches, we're all in the winning business here at USC. Thank you all very much. Not really. No, I met with uh, Clay this morning and uh, I talked to, to him about some of the things I thought we did very well. Uh, some of the things I think that we can prove on and obviously this just happened uh, this morning. So we're going to have some lengthy discuss discussions this week and uh, totally trust that we'll put a great product on the field. Are you concerned about attitude? Is, is that one of the big things you want to try and change with, with your program? Well, you know, I, I want to play with some energy. I want our guys to believe and have a little fun. And, uh, and we're going to work on those things this week. I really think one of the things that we're going to do as a staff is get really close to our players, kind of circle the wagons a little bit, and have some fun for these next eight games and let the chips fall where they may. And what did you think of the quarterback dilemma slash confusion at the beginning of this season? And yeah. do you plan to stick with Cody? Yeah, I plan to stick with Cody. I think he's earned the starting right. Uh, what I saw in camp, uh, I probably made the same decision as Lane Kiffin. None of the guys took the uh, the leading quarterback position by 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 storm, and we had to see who was going to perform in a game day atmosphere the best. And Cody has proven that. I'm gonna tell them we're gonna see what's gonna happen. But you know what? There's a great opportunity for a great education. Uh, USC has won many national championships here. Uh, there's an opportunity to come in and start and be a freshman All-America. Uh, there's a lot of great things about USC that are still here. Nothing's changed about USC. And I know this about Mr. Hayden and Max Nikias, that they're going to recruit the best available head football coach there is in the country to bring back a championship program here to USC. I feel confident about that. Days like today, speaking to media, uh, be able to handle a team, some good, some bad, um, how to react in adverse situations, uh, how to go play LSU in Alabama, at LSU in Alabama, and uh, in a hostile environment, how to react with all the players on the team as a head football coach, not, not the defensive line coach, how to interact and organize recruiting, uh, all that stuff, I feel like I'm prepared for it. Coach, did you, because you've had a long relationship with Lane Kiffin and you've had that head coaching experience, how receptive was he to you on any advice you may have had for him during bad times? Was he receptive or did he basically say, you know, I'll do my job, you do yours? How, how Very receptive. Very. His door was always open to me and I was able to talk to him about anything. Are you going to open up practice to us and talk about injuries? Yes, we're going to try to open up practice. I'm going to talk to Tim about compliance, and then I'll talk to you about the other subject later. Yeah, yeah. How would you compare your sideline demeanor, your presence to Lane's presence? Not to speak to Lane. How would you, how would you all 
But we're a little different. You know, I'm not going to be calling plays. You know, I don't call plays. You know, Lane, Lane was calling plays, and I think he's very good at it, and I always respected him as that. Uh, I'm going to have some energy, some excitement, high-fiving guys, having fun. That's what I like to do. I texted him three times. He texted me back. I called him. Uh, they were very positive texts. I thanked him for all the things that he did for us. What have you been told about your interim position and whether it holds any opportunity beyond that? Uh, all I've, I've been told is uh, they want me to represent USC today, take this team, what can we do to get better today, and take these eight games one game at a time. That's all I've been told. And that's all I expect. Yes, I believe he called plays at Memphis. And I, I went against him at Memphis when I was at Ole Miss. And uh, I think he's going to do a very good job for us. Anything else for Coach? Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Let's uh, bring up uh, Vaughn and Marcus. Vaughn will reach you here right. You guys, were you surprised? Were you shocked? What was your reaction when you? Got the, the uh, I kind of woke up in the middle of the night to some text, so uh, definitely surprised. But, you know, first I want to thank Coach Kiffin. He did so much for us while he was here, and we appreciate, you know, everything he did for us. And, um, you know, now it's just time to move on, and we're excited about a new opportunity. It's a new beginning and a new season for us these next eight games. Oh, well, I was surprised this morning when I woke up. I had about six different text messages from individuals about um, Coach Kiffin. And first off, I just want to say thank you to Coach Kiffin and everything that he's done. But I mean, you know, um, we're just trying to move forward now and, and focus on uh, these next eight games that we have and really bonding as a Trojan family and getting these wins. Have there been any talk among team players about this action prior to this morning because of all the publicity that uh, that Lane has been getting throughout the course of the year? Um, no. The players were very happy with what Coach Kiffin was doing. He was doing a great job, and nobody was complaining or worried about anything. We were worried about uh, trying to win these games. Guys, what about the reports that Kiffin had lost the locker room and, you know, the, whatever happened last year after the Georgia Tech game? You know, what about those reports? Is there any real truth to, do, to those? I mean, how's it been as a team? No, we support we supported Coach Kiffin 100 percent, and we're behind him. And um, you know it was tough. You know the last night's loss it was tough on all of us, and you know everybody, coaches and players, were hurting after that. And you know there's no separation there. Was all the talk about Lane a distraction from you guys ever? Did you all hear it around campus, well, especially the last three or four weeks when it really picked up? Was, all, was that distracting at all to you guys? No, we were just uh, focused on each other and really trying to focus on developing ourselves. You know, after losing, you always try to come back strong and work on developing the team. And we never were focused on what the media had to say about uh, Coach Kiffin. And fans, people talking, did you, surely classmates, students would ask, are they going to keep him here? Is he gone? I mean, did that ever bother you guys? Uh, we kept it in the locker room. You know, we we wanted to focus on us, and that's what's most important is us players and what we we thought, what we felt. So none of that really got to us ever. And you know, you of course hear it, but we kept it at a whisper and we kept things in the locker room. And you know, our locker room is still strong, and we're excited. You've had losses before, guys. Did you sense anything different about last night's loss and maybe the the demeanor of Coach Kiffin after the game? Did he seem any different than he had been over previous losses? He more down, more dejected, or? Coach Kiffin always uh, kept his morale up after the games. He would uh, huddle us up and talk to us at the end and tell us what our mistakes was and what we need to do better. And that as a Trojan family, we always got to respond. You know, you take some blows and you give some blows. It's just, it's just how you respond. And Coach Kiffin did a great job with that. As a player, when you lose a game, there's always more that you can do. And, you know, I expect everybody on our team to feel that way, you know, going after a loss like that. So, you know, I'm looking at myself and what I could have done to help my team win. And I think everybody is. So, you know, that's, that's what happens after, after a loss when you want to win.
seemed like something changed last year with the team. What do you think it was? I didn't play last season, so I can't directly speak on that. But um, this season, we've just it's, we've just been fighting. You know, we've been we've been fighting, and and we fell short twice. You know, and that's all that's all I can say on it. But I think we're going to put a better product on the field next game, and going to have a great week of practice uh, this bye week, and get ready to go.